it in the hood with it. Welcome back to the Collective Clips where you already know we get it in. But before we get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Put your notification bell on also that way you're directing the direction of the dope content I'm kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support I'm getting. We're going up on this channel and it's all because of you. I'm humbled and thank you guys very much, man. I appreciate it. So I wanted to tell you guys a story, a throwback from way back, man. But at the same time, you know, anyone who likes prison stories, jail stories, this is that one for you, or maybe it isn't. It's a little grimy should, but it's for reals, right? So, you know, you hear these stories and you see these movies, and it seems like every time Hollywood portrays some type of movie scene, there's always someone getting violated, right? There's always someone getting, pop goes their weasel, right? Um, and I don't know why they do that. I don't know if it's to scare people or it's the intel that they got that they truly believe that guys are in prison constantly getting raped on, um, that Danny Masterson is entering the building on him, right? But that's not the truth, man. You hardly ever see it, but it does happen. You know, for whatever fucking weirdo ways that people have, they do do these things to people, right? I don't think more so out of sexual gratification. I mean, there are some that do that up in the cells and things like that do happen. But I think more so it's they just got deviant behaviors and they just want to punish someone. So this story is about an individual who was solid as rocks, man. Went in and because of his age and because they thought, they thunk he messed up. Um, what they did to him was horrific, right? It's pretty bad. And it forever tainted his life and changed his views on everything. Um, but never changed my views about him because I understood and I knew what it was. So anyways... You know, um, this individual I had been knowing for a long time. We weren't from the same neighborhood, but we were cool. We were cool like that, you know. In fact, a lot of his family, a lot of my family were friends. And I just grew up around him. Uh, we did dirt together. Serious, serious major dirt. And I can tell you, this guy right here was on frontline status. You know, the type of individual that if you're going to handle your business and do something, he he raised his hand quick. He was there. Cuete y todo, right? So that guy basically um, was a soldier. A soldier for his cause, a true homeboy, and not someone that I, like I said, I kicked it with every day, but if we ran into each other, it was always love and respect, and like, hey, bro, what's going on? Now, he was younger than me. He was a few years younger than me, and, and wasn't really seasoned in county jails, prison, things of that nature, more so was a street gang member. See, there's difference, there's a different level to this shit. When you're a street gang member, you're jumped in a body, you're out there doing things like stealing cars or robbing stores or whatever it is, right? To each their own, whatever you're into. And then when you get incarcerated, it goes to another level. It becomes political if you, if you identify with that. It becomes real. Now you're seeing what your cause is really about. And basically the Norteño cause at that time was defend our people, defend our household by any means. Because we were striving for social status of equality. We just wanted to be treated the same. But at the same time, we knew we were different, right? So we were willing to get off just like that for our people. Most of us, okay? There are some situations where both was bowed down like the West Side Connection. And to each their own again. But in my situation, man, it seems like everywhere I went, wherever few little homeboys that were there, we tried to do our thing and maintain and establish and set up shop and plant our flag. So anyways, I took him for being someone like that. If he ever got locked up, he was going to go to the next level because he was striving on the streets. It was all about the Norteño cause to him. It was all about his barrio first and foremost. Again, now we weren't from the same barrios, um, but we were cool with each other. You know, I come from a small town in the Central Valley of California. So everybody pretty much got along with everybody unless it was a personal beef. Because guess what? My old lady sucked your charter back in 86, right? Now me and you got to get it on, right? Serious? No, not like that. You know what I mean, right? So, um... Anyways, this guy gets locked up, right? He gets locked up and uh, he, he was in on a solid case, man. Not a bad case. And the riffraff he was locked up with at the time in the county jail, this is the cool part about it. So a guy's in the county jail, right? Let's put him to the side for a second. So I got to give you a backstory so that you understand the context to this. So this guy who took over our county jail. Now, in our county jail, we're segregated, okay? Away from everyone. And it's not because... We're scared or anything, but they segregate the Norteños, the Southsiders and everyone because the funk would be on. It'd be funk season for real. There'd be body after body after body. And there's that even just being segregated with your own people. So many removals and so many things happen on the inside from the outside, right? So um, in the makeup of the county jails, they segregate everybody. And 
the homie goes in there with all the northerners active, you know. And, of course, I always used to tell the little homeboys, in real life, this was the game I'd give them. Look, bro, to me, on planet Earth, there's dangerous places like Pelican Bay, uh, 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 High Desert, Salinas Valley. There's prison. And I'm talking about in the prison world, right? The jail world. Because I know there's some dangerous-ass fucking caverns out there somewhere in the middle of the butt fucked Egypt where you can get bad things done to you, right? But anyways, when it comes to prison thinking in California, I'm like, hey, bro, out of all places on earth, our county jail, our functioning ass county jail, Merced County Jail is probably the most dangerous because your own homeboy is going to hit you for the smallest infraction. I mean, it was all lies on you and everybody was in there looking at a lot, at long terms and everybody was tripping off of everybody. Believe me. Right. So any little thing that you had in the past will be brought up. Motherfuckers will speak on it and more than likely you're going to get removed. And when you get removed there, it's going to be vicious and violent. They're going to put metal inside you. In this case, they did a little something different, right? So anyways, the uh, I used to tell them, and, and it, it was what it was. You know, I remember one time going to the county jail, looking into the eyes, and it was like they were soulless. They were looking through me. And I was like, I was just with this motherfucker two days ago eating at Denny's. Fuck you. Next time, grand slam on you, homie, right? Like, I was all pissed. And until I got my clearance process and got cleared to function, to kick it right there, um, there was guys with fucking weaponry on me. That's how it was, man. You'd get to the county jail, sit your ass up on the top bunk. Let me see your, your thing. Where's your paperwork? Let me read your little uh, lockup order or your 128G or whatever you're in here for, right? And you're going to sit your ass there until you go through a clearance process. And we make sure that you're able to function in this household. And there's going to be security blankets on you, meaning two guys watching you at all times. And if you get off that bunk without asking to take a piss, yes, asking another grown man, um, you're going to get whacked, right? They're going to take it as a threat. And uh, you pose a thread and it'd be your own homeboy. Like I said, that just last week you guys shared a burrito at the best taco truck. You know what I'm saying? You like lengua, he likes carne asada, but fuck it. You guys did what you did and you got buche. That's just how it is. Now, so I've been through it and I remember one time getting there and be like, oh shit. My own homeboy was looking at me like the Terminator. That about was like, I'll be back. I was like, fuck bro, shit. Come back, be normal, eh? You know what I mean? Eat a Snickers bar and snap back into it like a Slim Jim. So anyways, I got cleared, whatever. Um, and then the homies told me, hey, we just got to fucking, you know what I mean? We got to be on our shit, bro, because this is our household. And I understand. You know, I've been understanding way before even that homie was understanding because I've been doing it since a kid, right? But I was just like, wow. The intensity and the way you feel in there, your own homeboys make you feel. It's like, fuck this, bro. I don't want to come back here. You vatas are willing to kill me over fucking crumbs. I'm good, right? Of course, if you have, and I used to tell the homies, if you have any dirt, any anything. There's a bunch of skeptics in there. They're not seeing the glass half full. They're seeing it half empty, bro. And they're going to dump it on you. So the best thing for you to do is try to keep your ass away from that county jail, man. If you got some suspicious activity going on that we don't know about. And if you do get the fuck away from me as well. Right. And that's it. So anyways, the little homie goes in there. Okay. He goes to the county jail. He gets caught up for fucking being with other gang members. I think they get caught with a piece, a gun or something. And so he goes to the county. And one thing about that county jail, like I said, the context, the guy who was running it at the time was a degenerate. Now, what does a degenerate mean in the Northern Rules and Regulation Handbook, right? Meaning that he had did something along the way bad and he was canceled out. He was no longer in good standings. He was no longer active or he was no longer general population. He had paroled from a bad yard. But see, nobody knew. Because he wasn't that type of homeboy. He was an OG, like kind of a little, well, I would, I, he's an OG now, right? I'm an OG now, shit, shout, right? But he was older than us. So nobody really kept up with his bullshit, right? No one really kept up with what he was doing in prison. And so we always knew he was somebody behind the scenes. I mean, that was just, we didn't really know, but that was the word. Hey, the homie fucking, he'd been to Pelican Bay, been to Corcoran, you know what I'm saying? Been to Tehachapi, all the shoes. Um, he's really with the business, you know. One of those homeboys that gets out on swole all the time, very minimal tattoos. That's how you know. When they get all taqueated down and shit, okay, maybe they were in a spot. And this is, I'm talking about north from south, right? Southerners, they always are all blasted down. That's just what they do. They got good artists, the best artists, right? Um, but with northerners, you hardly see them with any good tattoos or anything, right? Um, there was many, many years where they weren't allowed to get certain tattoos or whatever. But usually those OG homeboys that would get out with... Not a lot of tattoos, just on swole. Um, those were the ones, right? Those were the ones that were really with the business or who we considered with the business in my city. He was one of them. So he had just happened to go to the county jail and immediately he got the yabes. 
So immediately he's running the county jail. Now at this time, in this time, this was the late 90s. This was like 98, 99. So there was a transitional period going on where it's not like it is now where North Bend is going there and it's a saw, saw, saw function. They were just starting to implement a lot of the, uh, the politics. You know, because I remember going to the county jail when I first got out in 96, 97 out of the Youth Authority, my first little stint in the county. It was love, man. It was just a hell of homeboys in there busting spreads. Work out if you want to. It was all good, but it changed. It changed, man. Like I said, when I went and the motherfuckers was on me posted up, I was like, nah, hell nah. I just came in here to do three days. That's you about to act like you want to do something, like you want to chop my people off. I'm cool, right? So it started to transition into change and get, it got more militant. It got more structured, right? A lot of the new uh, program was implemented. And of course, my county jail being a function up to Park County, um, the North Enders go all out there. So that's just what it was, right? Um, respects for that. You need structure. But at the same time, man, it, it, it will deplete your soldados. It will deplete your people because not only are you working them out to death, but you're also pushing them away. Because basically in the northern mindset, it's only the elite, only the strongest survive. It's like the fucking, the, they consider themselves the Marines or the fucking, the Navy SEALs of prison. Ask any North Ender that sees and been around, he's going to say they're comparable to the Navy SEALs in prison. Um, and that's just what it is, right? So that's how our county was. It was a hard fought battle. Just every time you went to the yard, someone was either getting removed or your ass was working out to your tongue hung out. Facts, right? So anyways, this guy, for some reason, somehow he was able to um, get in possession of the Yavis, meaning he was the shot caller there. So while he was there, he did, you know, it came out later, he did a lot of despicable bullshit. Behind the scenes, he was putting people on bad news lists to be whacked and hit, to be questioned. Um, he was utilizing, you know, the little power he had to get all the dope, you know, accumulate all this dope. He was actually having people bring dope in or people that would bring it into the county and he was going to visit and sending it out. What a dopey move, right? So his lady could sling it on the streets and they could keep the money. So he was utilizing the people that way. He was stirring up controversy. He was showing homeboy favoritism. If you weren't from Merced, if you were from like the county like Livingston or Pronada or, or Los Baños or Dos Palos, right? All these little cities that surround that do have righteous, solid, good homeboys. Um, he was fucking making homeboys go against them, you know, uh, getting them whacked, removed. It was just a bad, at that time, for that little period of time he was there, five, six months, a lot of bad shit happened. And nobody could pinpoint it. When people got hip to the skip and they finally figured it out, it was already too late. So anyways, this guy, um, the youngster goes in at the same time, right? So when he goes, the way our fucking county is, is this, there are eight man cells. There's like six or seven, eight man cells, right? I forget, it's been years. And you go in whatever cell they put you in, right? At this time, it was on three block. They called it three block. And we would fluctuate from three block to four block back and forth. I think it's still three block now, but at this time it was three block. So the homie goes in, youngster. He's expecting to get, you know, embraced and educated and give him the rundown. And that's what should happen. But always what should happen isn't what could happen, right? What could happen is different. This is what happened. So he goes in and he's chilling, man, and it's whatever. And for some reason... One of the homeboys from his neighborhood gets there and they had conflict and they had conflict because they liked the same chick. Now, the younger homie that I fucked with, the one that this happened to, uh, he wasn't no long. He had he had just gotten married and now he was doing his little thing. But in the past, he had got a little mom one or two, you know, what I'm saying from the fat chick. But this dude still remembered. And one thing you can't do is sleep with another homeboy's chick, um, fraternize or anything. Conversate with another homie's chick, kind of like the bikers, their property of, right? And it's an unspoken rule, but a rule that everyone knows. You don't fuck with the homies old lady, especially when they're locked up or anything. But everyone does. It's crazy, right? But you're not supposed to. Oh, you're fucking a degenerate. You're a piece of shit. But meanwhile, you're boning your active homeboy's old lady and you're active. Just doesn't seem right, right? Does it? Anyway, so that's what happened where the home, little homie didn't know that she had an old man that was locked up at the time from his hood and older. Whatever. He did what he did. He gave her some of that honey love like an R. Kelly song. Maybe even pissed on her. And then, you know, it came back to haunt him. So anyways, the homie sees him. And instead of being like, hey, he jams him up immediately. Hey, what's up, bro? You're fucking my chick when I was locked up or what? And he's like, Charlie, bro, I didn't know. And he denied it. And the denial was the worst thing you could do. See, if he would have been like, hey, bro, I didn't even know. But yeah, hell yeah, shit. You know what I mean? Long dick style. So let's get the way she wiggles. I like the way she moves, right? Like a fucking outcast song. Don't trip. 
if he would have at least been real, maybe the homie could have gave him the ghetto pass. But instead, he's just like, oh, okay, you want to lie. That's even worse now. You're lying. Now, at the time, the homie had a little status. The one that had just got out of jail and came back, his old lady, got they popped her weasel, right? So the little homie's not thinking nothing. He's thinking, yeah, bro, the homie took it on the chin like that. Cool. He wasn't trying to act tough. He was just like, yeah, bro, it was a couple night thing. And, and I mean, she was all right, but she wasn't the best, okay? Um, well, they started to plot on him. They started to plot on him. And usually, usually, you know, they'll, they'll just remove you. Getting removed is you're going to get stabbed, sliced, jumped on, beat up. Something's going to happen. They're trying to take your win, though. You know, in that county jail, they're going to fucking try to take your win. It sucks, too, because you can get jumped on for a long period of time. They'll beat the holy hell out of you. And there's cops that are just walk. They don't even walk down the tier, but for count times and, like, chow and shit. Not even chow. They have the tier tenders. They pop the tier tender cell. They come out. They push the fucking uh, the meal cart to the end of the of the hallway, and then they hand shit out. So the only time you see a cop is if he comes to unlock you for medical, visiting, or fucking count time. So you can go hours without seeing a cop. And people bank on that and know this. So they'll fucking kill you in the a.m. and you won't be found to the to the noon. It's bad, right? Bad situation. So anyways, these guys decide, you know, hey, the homie's all bad, whatever. And of course, you got that degenerate that's running the building, that guy who's not active, that just likes drama and likes to see Northanios hurt each other anyways. He's, he's no longer that, but he's running that for some fucking crazy reason, right? They found out later. He ended up getting whacked on the streets or got fucked up. So anyways, um, the homies are like, we're going to wait to the nighttime in his cell and we're going to do bad things to him, right? Of course, he was celled up with the guy who's old lady, all that. And then there was a few other homies. Um, and the dude gave clearance for what they were going to do. Never in my life have I seen, this is not in the Northanial way. Northanials don't get down like this, right? Never. Um, this was horrific, right? So they waited till fucking program shut down and all that. They grabbed the homeboy. They started to choke him out. You know, they got sheets, started to choke him out. They got him on the ground. Now, the tier tenders will go by and hand mops into your cell like every couple of days so you can mop your cell out or whatever. Um, they had gotten one of the, I don't know how they were able to do it, but they got one of these brooms and they broke it till it was about that long, the broomstick. And they savagely, uh, repeatedly stuck it in, stuck it where it winks, where it stinks, not winks, right? Um, over and over again, beat him with it. Weren't, wasn't trying to kill him, was just trying to punish him for what he did, man. Um, this went on, right? So when it went on, they made him roll it up. He's beat up, savagely beat up. They made him call for keys. That's what they used to do back in the days. He yelled keys. Cops came. What's going? What's wrong with you? I got a stomach ache. Well, I'm sure you do. You know, by the looks of that flesh wound. And they take the homie to the hole. It's very unfortunate. And, and it's not nothing to joke about, right? Um, again, we're on the streets now. No one knows about this, right? And so he gets out. And I remember there's a lot of rumors going on. Hey, did you hear what, the, what happened to him? He's no good, bro. He's no good. He rolled it up. He rolled it up. So I hit him up one day. What's up, bro? You know what I'm saying? What's up with you? Um, and he's like, nah, bro. And he runs me down the story. And I'm like, damn. He was like, it was that fucking degenerate motherfucker that everyone found out? That fool fucking let him do that to me. And I go, who did that to you? Well, let's just say that everyone who did that to him eventually either got whacked. My own brother whacked one of the dudes. Facts. 100%. Cut him up like ribbons, right? Um, for that. For that incident. And in fact, it was the main guy. It was the main guy, right? The one whose fucking old lady got her fucking cornhole, cornhole old, right? And then they did him. Um, so um, it was just unfortunate. But anyways, this is what happens. So years pass, and I'm on a 50-50 yard. Yes, 50-50 yard, man. Um, that means non-active North Daniels and everyone else was supposedly supposed to be functioning. Guys that weren't supposed to be there were there, right? Um, paperwork was getting checked. There wasn't no rapos or weirdos or nothing like that. Don't get it twisted. It was a whole bunch of gang members, and we were non-active. Um, it was just like being on the regular GPR, to, to be honest with you. So anyways, I'm doing my thing. It's Jamestown Prison, level three. Um, was it Sierra Yard? I forget what the name of the yard was. It wasn't Cascade. I think it was Sierra. So anyways, I'm on the yard doing my thing. And I run into the homie. I see him, right? He says my name. I'm like, what's up, bro? Damn, it's been years. Now, I already knew he was on the other side because it came out. People were telling the story of what happened in the county jail. Again, he was always my friend and my homie because he got fucking raped, right? That, that. Shouldn't have never happened to him. I mean, okay, if they justified the removal and they wanted to slice on him a little bit, whatever, that's part of the game, homie. You know what you signed up for. But to do what they did to him, nah. Let me tell you what happens. Sometimes when bad things happen to people, it changes their mind. Okay, so it had been, like I said, I, I talked to him when he first got out. He told me the story. I was like, wow, bro, Spencer, 
You know what I'm saying? I feel for you like a Shaka Khan song, but at the same time, bro, don't let that, don't let no one get you down, right? And that was it. I hadn't seen him for a long time because I was getting locked up or whatever. So when I run into him in this yard, I'm like, what's up, bro? I wasn't shocked to see him because, again, man, you know, he was no longer active and I wasn't as well. So I'm like, what's up, brother? And this is years later. And he's doing the Native American thing. He's different, right? He's different. Very different. And I'm like, all right. So I'm going to keep him. I'm going to feed him with the long handles. But he just wasn't my stilo in there. You know, I just wanted to work out, bus spread, sell pruno. You know what I'm saying? Try to fucking fuck the fat free staff. Whatever I could do. Um, but he wasn't doing that. He was on his religious hype and whatever he was doing, right? He was into his native stuff, doing beating and whatever, which is cool, man. Shout out to my native brothers. That's what they do in prison. A lot of them. So what happens is this cat gets there. This cat gets there, bro, and they sell him up together. And it's like three days later, and I see them walking the homie, you know, that I know across the yard. He's in nothing but boxers, his socks, his chanclas on, and a t you know, white beater. And they're walking him, escorting him to Ad Seg, right? And we had heard an incident popped off. The alarm went off, an incident happened in his building. And so when I get to the yard, you know, we skipped yard that day. No, no. We went to yard in the morning. The incident happened, fucking, I guess, in the morning. They fucking, we, we're out on fucking morning yard. They take him to the hole. Next thing you know, they're slamming the yard because something else popped off. I remember. And so I tell the one of the homeboys, that's there, there's like four of us from Merced there. I'm like, bro, what happened with the homie, right? They're like, you didn't hear what happened? This fool fucking went and got the broom, bro, and savagely beat and raped the celly with the broom. I said, he, that's what happened to him. They were like, what? I was like, you didn't hear about it? I was like, wow, why would he do that to someone when they did that to him? That's how the human mind works. It's different. Sometimes when a traumatic situation happens, it's like your mind blocks it out or whatever or makes you want to, I guess you wanted to feel how that felt, man. Um, and then that was it. I never was in the yard with him again, but it was just a horrific thing that happened to him that should have never fucking happened to him, period. And I remember getting out and getting at a lot of homies like, bro, you guys allowed that shit in the county jail? They were like, I didn't do it. I just said, motherfucker, shit stunk, homie, but I didn't do it, right? I said, why'd they... We don't get, bro, you know what I'm saying? You think something was odd and funny? They were like, fuck, it got cleared. You know, the, the, the big homie was there cheering it on. He was like, get that motherfucker. I was like, oh, wow. Anyways, true story shit happens. With that being said, man, I hope you think twice before you get locked up and get in there with the cell. You don't know what's going through his mind, what's happened to him in the past that could now happen to you. True story shit happened. Um, it was shit. It really happened, and it was fucked up, man. That was dude was cool. He was solid, right? And some little slip up fucking with someone else's old lady got him punished like that. I got so many stories of motherfuckers fucking with other dudes' old ladies getting cut up into ribbons. It's, it's ridiculous. It seems like that was one of the main reasons Valtos were getting removed for. All over a chick. Hey, the world revolves around women, huh? They got the day. That puts his power, homie. It's gold, eh? Whole bunch of leprechauns out here not knowing what to do with it. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get every single thing that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, the struggle, the strive. I'm going to continue to tell you these stories, not to shed light on gang violence and bullshit, but to enlighten you and let you know, man, just how tricky and icky, sticky dance moves it can get while being in jail, prison, or incarcerated period in the state of California, man. It's going to make you think twice because ain't nothing nice. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle for what I honestly and truly believe in, and that's providing the best possible content I can here on YouTube, bringing everyone together to, you know, watch it and get an understanding. That's the best I can do. I appreciate you. Bang, bang.